Tonight's three nominees have all turned in exquisite performances in very demanding roles. Here are the nominations. Richard Harrington, A Gwyll, Hinterland. Gravel, Tridic Pimp Durnod. Is still a rattle in Yegbitha? Dom in a restaurant of Lam Pauv. As a very bold, more embarrassing, so he'd go in that. Oh, Mathy then, so. Ah, I thought, of course, Mathy then. Don't even sell with all you but in person more romantic, Tony. I'm having big softy, really. No. Tom Riley. Da Vinci's Demons. Why? What you have with women isn't love. You're with them out of fear. I'm curious by nature. I... <laughs> Desire is not, it's not, as, it's not as simple as, as one sex or the other. I... I'm sorry I hurt you. My experiments and curiosities there. They're not always without cost, and I should mind that better, but trust me, trust me. No one defines me. And the winner is... Tom Riley, Da Vinci's Demon. Uh, wow, I, did, I really didn't expect this, and not just because of the stick on beard in that clip. Um, this is a huge honour. Uh, thank you so much to. BAFTA Cymru. Um, it's, it's been an incredible journey, this, and I've been really lucky. And I think the great, the great dirty little secret that actors have, um, that we all harbour, I think any actor in this room will agree, is that really you're only as good as uh, the other people in the scene allow you to be. So really, I, I share this with what I think is the finest ensemble cast in television today. So Laura Haddock, Blair Ritson, Elliot Cowan, Greg Chillin, Hera Hilmore, Eris Vlahos, Lara Pulver. This is all of ours. So um, you, uh, I, I'm only good because you've been opposite me, making me better. So thank you very much. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, Wales. Um, it, I've been here for, we've been shooting this for two, three years now, and it's been a joy to shoot, and it's been a joy to live here. And that is predominantly because of the people, and our crew is full of the most incredible locals in every department, costume, production, a lot of them have been nominated tonight. Um, and we couldn't have hoped for a more talented, ambitious, hard-working team to take on such a huge international production of such scale and ambition. Um, so thank you, Wales, for, for the Welsh. And I'm, I'm not just playing to the room, although it might sound like I am. Um, finally, uh, David S. Goyer, all the, everyone at Stars, that's Chris Albrecht, Carmi Zlotnick, Martin Fernandez, um, and everyone at BBC Worldwide, Jane Tranter, um, Julie Gardner, Courtney Conti, and our fantastic producer on season one, um, Lee Morris. Thank you very much. This means the world to me. Thank you. So talk to us about playing Leonardo da Vinci. When you first got the part, um, how do you even start to prepare for that role? Well, obviously, it's so terrifying, a, a role to take on, and there's so much expectations on, on the greatest mind in human history. I just immersed myself in as much research as I possibly found, even though we were doing a historical fantasy, a very amped-up version of Leonardo, a sort of comic book version for David Goyer, who created it. I still wanted to be as true to as much of the man as I could find, so I just researched the hell out of it. And what about bringing him to life as a person, his personality, his mannerisms, his speech? Mm. What, how did you 
think about what, how that would best be, be represented. And that's really the only way in that I've found, is that you have to find things that he had in his life that are similar, even vague, to, 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 human, to, to a human with a normal level of IQ. And so, you know, just his relationship with his father and his relationship with, with authority and how he felt being a bastard and having a, you know, not being able to inherit wealth in Renaissance Florence, all that sort of stuff. Um, so that was one way. And other stuff, I looked, in, uh, looked at people speculating he was somewhere on the autism spectrum, so I uh, incorporated various elements of that and just sort of lots of, I, pick and, I picked and chose. Any particular parts of the role or the stories you've had to do that you've found really challenging or, or really enjoyable? Um, I, I, I enjoy how unpredictable he is and, and how spontaneous. Um, and yeah, the, the, some of the action stuff is hard. Switching from high octane action, swinging from roof to roof one day and the next day going to a deeply written um, speech that's two pages long about the intricacies of an engine. That's, that's the, it's, it's that shift that throws me. Did you know much about him before you got the part? I knew the heart, the sort of the, the secondary school version of him. I knew about his art. I knew about the, the legacy he left behind. But I didn't had no idea what he was like in his twenties and thirties. What a lawbreaker he was. What an anti-authoritarian. I just didn't know. And it's only through digging into that stuff that a whole new character has come out. Weirdly, that's not who people expect. So people found that slightly abrasive at first, I think, and have begun to buy into it more as it's gone on. And what do you think it is that's really hooked the audience and, and made it the success that it's been? Well, that's a great question. I think. It does incredibly well internationally, the show. It's in 130 countries. And I think someone said that Leonardo is, or Da Vinci is the, the most famous name in the world after Christ. So there was already a way in there anyway. Um, so, and then on top of that, we threw every romance, thriller, horror, you know, everything at it that kind of hooks an audience from a Monday perspective. And it's a period drama. So it's a melting pot.